warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members, participants, and viewers worldwide on various platforms. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being valued members of our community every single day. A very sad day today in Britain. We are mourning the passing of His Royal Highness Duke of Edinburgh. And you would have heard me saying that yesterday as I received the news. I'm deeply, deeply saddened to have seen and heard the news. And um, we had a 41 gun salute, which is a traditional ceremonial uh, type of tribute to the life and the service of the Duke. And I watched it live earlier on Sky and. Uh, it was a truly humbling experience just to consider that the Duke had spent more than 70 years, uh, um, um, I should say probably more than 8 years in the public service is a truly extraordinary fact. I think everyone needs to pay tribute and take a moment at the time really to uh, remember the life and the works of this wonderful, wonderful Britain. Had a good day so far, watched the gun tribute, uh, indeed although very saddened I've gone out a bit and uh, enjoyed a bit of fresh air we don't have much sunshine in our local area today it's very wintry you know nippy it looks like rain and ideal time for people to be indoors and spending some time with their favorite video games and I kept telling you already for a number of days that the games I'm playing at the moment are the Outer Worlds and Yakuza but today I had another which had been added to my roster and my list and it's the game I wanted to play for quite some time and I've got to and many reasons as to what it is initially I wanted to play it on PlayStation but never got to and uh, I think it was also on PlayStation um, now so this is a little while back that's of course Rockstar's masterpiece uh, Grand Theft Auto GTA 5 that became accessible instantly through Game Pass yesterday downloaded it uh, made it ready on my console for today and then uh, as after I watched the tribute and the gun salute and after I paid respects to the Duke I tried the game and I've got to tell you it is a very very enjoyable one I'm sure that everyone listening to the podcast would have played it already I'm one of the very few that uh, would have never gone in but uh, the version we are getting is uh, the big one with everything in it and we can also access GTA Online in the same way as we were able to do that with um, Red Dead 2 so that's really truly wonderful and uh, you know just as you would expect it to be fantastic in-game tutorial and lots of activities plenty of driving I've got to say if there's one reason as to why I've not played GTA that much over the years is to do with driving this is a massive big open world game there's lots of places to go to lots of dialogue NPCs quests sub quests activities you name it and one of the best, the most well-developed uh, that Rockstar ever produced. I think together, with uh, everyone will agree, with Red, uh, Red Dead 2, these are some of the most complex, the best, and um, the most enjoyable open world games ever created. Obviously, with their specific Rockstar signature, you will always have a lot of riding or driving, depending on you're playing uh, Red Dead or GTA, and there, there will be plenty of story-driven content for everyone to untangle many different sub quests lots of new characters uh, that will be unlocked and you know everything as you would expect it to be from any major rockstar blockbuster spend a bit of time driving and i'm not a great driver uh, <laughs> and therefore it did take me a little while to get away from the police but uh, once i got away i um, managed to talk to many ca different characters and you know cracked on with a few missions and then I just left it because there were a few other admin things to do. So, you know, I'll be doing it every day, maybe for half an hour, 45 minutes, exploring this wonderful, uh, wonderful world of GTA, getting to know the characters and have my first hand experience of the game number five. Really most highly recommended to everyone because it's to my delight and surprise that they've added it. And um, I didn't think that Rockstar Games would be featuring anymore on uh, Game Pass. Or, albeit maybe for a very very short period of time. So this is a th this is a revelation and certainly a most welcome inclusion that would have come our way this week. And I've got you know linked a list with uh, you know uh, um, all the other games that I still need to look at. I told you already. I think we played. Um, where is it now? Let's see, Narita Boy, Alice, Outriders, um, Super Lucky Tail, Yakuza Three, and what was the other one? 
Octopath Traveler, Genesis Noir. Just has gone on and on. You know, I've not been able to play all the games as fully as I intended, but definitely have a good look and there's plenty of choice. At the moment I have a system to which I have three types of games which can be played on any consecutive day. So first it'll be a massive big open world game and uh, the other will be a bit like Naruto Boy, the you know old gen Atari styled uh, platformer and then point and click adventure. So these are the three that I can do in the course of one day and swing from one to another or just spend all my time dedicated to one. The one will be either point and click adventure or indeed the massive open world one. But uh, the games like uh, shortish platformers, the old gen games, always good, you know, as a respite in between two different activities. You can also do like 20 minutes, half hour collect some scores and then depart and do the other lot. That's exactly what I've been doing. The Outer Worlds is taking up all of my time at the moment, loving the game. Probably one of my favourite open world games ever played. Very complex, um, many different characters, massive big galaxy, new DLCs coming in and uh, I should say the second DLC already have come in and um, fantastic dialogue. It's, it's, it's a masterpiece of how best to make the game where action and story driven activities blending together perfectly. I think this is where um, Watch Dogs Legion and allegedly, although I've not played the game, Cyberpunk perhaps uh, did not excel and I've, se I've seen quite a lot of comments uh, uh, regarding Cyberpunk indicating that the open world is you know, as massive as it can be but uh, it doesn't really kind of gel in well with the story. I've not tried it so I can't tell you but I'm looking forward to maybe some freebie or some something coming in um, on the cyberpunk front once the game is fully technically um, supported, active, up and running which has not been the case from the beginning and then I'll try it, I'll be able to tell you more and Watch Dogs certainly played quite a bit uh, on its lengthy free weekend didn't really deliver too well I thought um, there were several issues that uh, came up again uh, it felt like a game that was still in motion not fully developed or not fully uh, completed uh, it did feel that we've had lots and lots of different activities through the streets of London which didn't really gel into one with the story. I mean that, that was my main complaint. They were interesting but it was like two separate entities and I wonder whether they used different development teams working on separate sections because as far as the design was concerned I also could see one lot uh, which would be um, London. The exteriors looked absolutely pristine and beautiful. Uh, various items that were thrown in, like chairs, signs, um, traffic lights, they didn't seem to be, you know, as clean cut as they should, really compared to the backgrounds. And then I also thought a lot more work should have been spent on uh, the um, protagonists, the main characters. Uh, the outfits were right, but I thought the generic composition of their facial expressions and the way they came across was definitely very much not in sync with the state-of-the-art graphics of the next-gen consoles. It's likely that this will be improved as we go along and I think certainly Ubisoft will consider Watch Dogs Legion not to be performing too well and uh, I'm saddened to see that. I was very excited and you know loads of pros and cons about the game. I think I really loved going back to the streets of London after doing it in Getaway many years back driving around and walking, exploring the streets. and But th the problem I had was they talked about London being like really exactly as it is. And that's not the case. That's just a, a shot in the dark. They definitely shortened up distances and you get from one place to another very, very fast. Um, lots of buildings and streets are either abbreviated, abridged or missing. And, you know, it does... I mean, obviously, if you were to be driving through the real size London will take you a bit more time but I think it was down to cost because we have um, the situation in in uh, GTA where you know the entire city is properly mapped out and um, you know it's down to the developer. Right so that's been my activity and I really I can tell you I so far enjoyed it reminded me also of Mafia somewhat. Mafia 3 I played a little while back, streamed it in here um, as it was given to us through freebies uh, free weekends and it does have the elements of that as well obviously in GTA a lot more driving and maybe because the protagonist that I started out on the character who who, who is the, the debt collector for 
um, guy who was selling cars, and uh, he did, there was some sort of um, there, you know there, there was some aura of similarity somewhere, but uh, both games are definitely um, very different and providing us with a huge amount of uh, uh, adventure uh, or um, open world based experience. So let me think today we are going to be looking at the news we've had lots of things coming in yesterday and um, we'll be looking at all that's happening across the week as well as what we can look forward to in those days to come and uh, there are several games that will be released and I've got to say I, it's mind-boggling when I look at the list of all the indie games releases there's just too many and the vast majority have been released through Xbox because they have obviously ID at Xbox and we've had a presentation recently uh, which was thoroughly enjoyable so it's just a, it's a sheer number of titles and I must admit surprised to see that many people are making the games that look a bit like retro the 90s style games and definitely very very popular I played Undertale recently here on uh, my Xbox and it was considered to be like a cult game. It was released for PC, but really beautiful design, and you're really not phased by the retro arcade style graphics because there was a story. There's a lot for you to learn, and some puzzles and sort of tricky platforming types of activities. So definitely very enjoyable, and uh, we are seeing a surge of such games really on various platforms, and therefore I will tell you a bit more about them as we go along. So let's have a look what really arrived since yesterday we've had um, well we had some news on Xbox Wire it says welcome to the next week on Xbox we cover all the new games coming soon to our Series X and S Xbox One Windows 10 PC as well as upcoming Xbox Game Pass uh, and soon uh, to be released ID at Xbox titles so let's have a look we have Night Squad 2 April the 13th so just in a few days will be released on Xbox One X and enhanced so this is a chaotic arcade multiplayer game for up to eight players pick up eccentric knights and fight for glory and with wacky weaponry triumph over your friends in a ridiculous amount of game modes both locally and online Kingdom of Arcadia I talked about a game already I think on my podcast April the 14th optimized for series X and S Sam is just a normal kid who lives, uh, who likes video games. Likewise, his father has a passion for all games, but when Sam tries out his dad's arcade machine, he suddenly pulled it aside, um, where he finds himself uh, staring in his own pixelated adventure. Can he back get back home, help Sam remove the spell cast on Arcadia, and return safely before it's too late? So it's a very interesting platformer. And the other Night Squad too looked a bit like Tetris for some reason, but also it's a platformer. Uh, also multiplayer. So, the friends of Ringo Ishikawa, April the 14th. A high school gang leader, Ringo Ishikawa, trying to live through his last fall before graduation with his best friends. If you are fond of a good story, fighting games and Yakuza-like aesthetics, you'll dig this open world beat them up. Oh, I'm interested because I'm playing Yakuza at the moment, so what better way to get introduced by, you know, just getting your teeth in the trilogy and then visiting the friends of Ringo Ishikawa, released on April the 14th. Hitchhiker, April the 15th. This is a mystery game set along lost highways where your goal is to solve the puzzle of your own backstory. So Hitchhiker, with no memory or destination, you catch a series of rides across a strange and beautiful landscape, tracking the mysterious disappearance of a person who's close to you. As your journey continues, you must decode the events of your past while confronting the dangers that lie ahead of you. That sounds very interesting. And uh, I wonder what is actually uh, going to be happening <coughs> within the story I've not you know it's no indication in that on what we are going to be doing so hitchhiker with a memory destination and you're catching all sorts of rides and sounds interesting rain on your parade April the 15th travel the world as a cute cardboard cloud well that's the game that I'm really interested in I talked about it yesterday you're gonna be doing pranks as you're playing a cloud and you do lots of different funny things in order to be um, unsettling some of the uh, pedestrians in various areas of that city and it says uh, uh, by being a cute cardboard cloud you can ruin everybody's day unlock new methods of mischief across 50 levels each with unique settings and objectives make new friends and help them too it's an adorable uh, game I agree I've seen trailer looks really amazing Sandwich Halloween, another platformer, April the 15th. 
Every year the monsters are invited to the big 24-hour Halloween rave, but this time nobody came home as an evil vampire used the spell to block the passage back to the afterlife because, according to him, the party could not stop. He joined the resistance and sent everyone home. No one could handle so much noise, goo and werewolf hair on clothes anymore. Short footing, April the 15th, a fast and frantic internet runner about four friends saving the world from extinction. The world of computer is under threat from the evil Ramspara and his ferocious minion Deletion Dave, who seeks to destroy the partitions that hold everything together. Bless one of our four heroes as they return, I run Dave across the disk sectors of computer. Oh, that sounds like an interesting plan. Oh, these are platformers. The Dark Side Detective, a fumble in the dark. April 15th. Look at this. All the games are released on the same day. Delires your room with sage and pack up your travel sized Yuji board. It's time to re enter Twin Lakes, America's 34th most haunted city. Join Detective McLean as he puzzles his way through his six chilling cases, risking life and pixelated limb to solve the macabre mysteries of the plague of this poor town. I'm very interested in that one. Looks very pixelated, looks a bit like the old games of the 90s, but um, looks like a good story. The Dark Side Detective, a fumble in the dark. Heal Console Edition, April the 16th, optimized for Xbox Series X and S. Heal is an experimental adventure game from the creator of this, this train series, exploring the themes of aging and dementia. The narrative is driven by a strong and obscure atmosphere, with instructions and dialogue used unsparingly. Wake up from a dreamless sleep, explore the mysteries of your surroundings, and solve puzzles. That's definitely interesting. Heal Console Edition on the 16th. There you are. Coming to the next-gen consoles. MLB The Show 21 Digital Deluxe Edition, April the 16th. Optimize for the next-gen consoles. Welcome to MLB Show 21. Experience faster, deeper and more intense moment-to-moment -moment action on the field with a variety of game modes for rookies and returning vets. Lead your ball player in Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty. Enjoy updates to the franchise and march to further modes. And face your friends across consoles with cross-platform play. That's all going to be kicking off on the Digital Deluxe Edition on April the 16th. And also it will launch on the April the 20th on the Xbox Store and with the uh, Xbox Game Pass. So we are getting it all sorted on Game Pass. So anybody interested in MLB, there, there you have it. Coming your way on Game Pass and it will be released on April the 20th. Super Meat Boy Forever. I like Meat Boy. April the 16th. Meat Boy and Bandage Girl have been living a happy life tree of Dr. Fetus for several years and now they have a wonderful little baby named Nug Nugget. One day, while our heroes were on a picnic, Dr. Fetus snuck up on them and kidnapped Nugget. When our heroes came to um, and found that Nugget was missing, they cracked the knuckles and decided to never stop until they got Nugget back and taught Dr. Fetus a very, very important lesson. So that is out on April the 16th. It doesn't say it was probably released on all platforms, I mean all uh, consoles, Xbox One and the Series X and S. The last one I have here um, that is going to be released on the 16th of April is Tribal Pass. Tribal Pass is a tactical hardcore runner comprised of resource management and environment interactions. Make your way through the unfriendly wilds encountering a quick river, a herb, a human and a beast of various dangers. You play around encounters, splitting and uniting the tribe, arming it properly, making sure your people are alive and your food is in stock. So as you've seen, all these all these games are going to be released within the next five to six days. Plenty, plenty for us to choose from. Plenty. Uh, we've heard that uh, um, Zombie Army 4 Dead War which in fact we picked up <coughs> on PlayStation for free this month <coughs> given to us through um, PlayStation Plus um, <coughs> we are getting it now also optimized for XNS so uh, we have here I think it's an interview with um, producer Steve Archer he's a senior producer um, for Zombie Army 4 Dead War and uh, I'm not going to read 
the interview but what to say one of the biggest benefits of all that power in the hardware is giving developers uh, the ability to make games that are Xbox Series X and S optimized. This means that they're taking full advantage of the unique capabilities of Xbox Series X and S, both for new titles but natively using the Xbox Series X and S development environment, as well as previously released titles that have been rebuilt specifically for the console. Inside Xbox Series X optimized series, these creators will share the behind the scene accounts of how they're optimizing the titles for Xbox Series X and S and what that means for the future of gaming. So, if you're interested as to why these kinds of approaches are applied and how they really do them, you can just head to Xbox Wire. There is an interview conducted by Mike Nelson, who is the editor of that Xbox section, and uh, also with the senior producer at Rebellion, Steve Archer. They'll be telling you all about the reasons as to why they've gone in. And then we have some more news about all that's been happening this week. So they tell us, we know you're busy, you might miss out on all the exciting things we are talking about on Xbox Y every week. So you've got a few minutes, we can remedy this. We obviously collate all the information and if you want you can obviously watch it through this week on Xbox or you can read all the information so this is going to be a reminder of all that we already heard and maybe a few bits of information in relation to the next week so we did hear that uh, we are getting what well, we already managed to get it Grand Theft Auto is up and running as well as export touch controls and everything else that is through uh, the um, Xbox Game Pass so uh, inside Xbox Series X and S um, has been optimized. We've just heard that Zombie Army 4 Dead War. So that's really pretty good. Uh, we did hear that Unto the End, the Souls like where fighting isn't your only option, is also going to be released. What the dub, I talked about it the other day, is bringing uh, a really bad movie night to an Xbox near. I'm really curious about um, what the dub it's a curious little game where you are replaying some of the worst films ever made and you're replacing its music and dialogue. You're really, really quite curious to see how this is going to work because I've never seen that sort of game before and maybe we'll use it here. Or maybe I'll even use it for my film dialogue channel if it works properly. So I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, see that, to see what this game's about. Cozy Grow is available on Xbox Series X and S. We've heard that. Uh, talking Samurai Warriors 5 with producer Hisashi Koinuma. Well, we talked about this a few days ago, so if you're interested, you need to head to Xbox Wire. The full interview is in there, and it'll tell you all about the game. Very excited about Borderlands 3, director's cut, and all of that. Uh, that is available through it. Plenty of add-ons. There are loads and loads of things. I think I told you all about it the other day. We'll um, quickly have a look at um, the, uh, the details. Let me just see if we have them. No, they're not really sorted out. Well, loads of loads of different things. So first of all, you're getting Vault Hunters, the chance to face off against Hem Hemovorus the Invincible, who is a brand new raid boss. So um, then when you're ready, you can go to Pandora, and then you'll find Hem Hemovorus behind your door that's been locked since Borderlands 3 first launched so for the first time you're unlocking him and then you can perfect your build bring your friends and prepare for the most intense boss fight ever and then obviously you are going to be getting some top tier loot as you complete you can have Ava solve some potentially supernatural slayings she's convinced she stumbled onto an interplanetary murder mystery ask for your help investigating investigating some eerie happenings on Pandora Promethea Eden 6 and Necrotifeo. So all of that is blending in with the central Borderlands 3 storyline. So you'll be fighting a gigantian new raid boss, solving some spooky slayings. Also it includes extra chances to score loot with three new vault cards. So once a vault card is activated, you are going to be scoring XPs by completing three daily challenges and a multi-tiered weekly challenge. With more than 100 unique challenges, each day will be a surprise. So you can earn your XPs, and you know you can do everything really with it and then vault hunters have plenty to look forward to with the second and third vault cards debiting before year's end so one vault card per quarter remember that and that will give you a new in-game resource called diamond keys and that will unlock a room known as the diamond armory 
and that's located under the upper deck of the bridge on Sanctuary. So the Diamond Armory is filled to the brim with tantalizing loot, and it's, you know, obviously very much of interest to anyone who likes looters and shooters, Paul Tassi being one of them. Um, they also said that Diamond Keys are in-game specific, so you cannot be purchasing them through the store. You can't pay the dollar for the key, you need to be grinding in order to get it, which I think is really absolutely terrific. I really like the idea of being able to have this option, whether you want to buy things or whether you can do your in-game grinds, but much prefer for certain items to be in-game grind exclusive. Otherwise, the other people get advantage. Just pay the dollar and get everything in. Yeah, it's not fair, is it? In addition to its raucous gameplay and abundance of loot, the director's cut is also really full of behind-the-scenes content, including concept art, storyboards, cut content, bloopers, a lot more. Take a rare peek behind the curtain and see how a game like Borderlands is made, with glimpses of never-before-seen content that may even answer a lingering question or two. Also, you are getting the Disciples of Vault packs, uh, a, a new set of multiverse cosmetics, and um, so obviously that you know you can see for yourself uh, um, what the fate of each Vault Hunter would have been if they joined the Children of the Vault. The Disciples of the Vault packs feature completely new character models, not just skins, much like the Final Form cosmetic packs that launched last fall. So, you know, definitely a very, very good game. And they have also some other niceties. I'm not going to tell you all about it anymore because I did talk about um, Borderlands 3 the other day and I want to have some other people perhaps kept on their toes to get a bit surprised, you know, discover some of the niceties in there. But, you know, getting that diamond key and get, getting the bolt, a new boss, and you know, just new cosmetics, you can't ask for more. And also, I need to say that Borderlands 3, not just accessible um, on Xbox throughout the director's cut, that's not on Game Pass. I need to stress this. It's not accessible on Game Pass. You can access it through uh, the streaming services of PlayStation from this week, incidentally, uh, together with Marvel's Avengers. So if you're interested, if you want to try these games, head to PlayStation Now services, click on Install, and therefore you'll be downloading it and then cracking on with some serious gameplay. I don't think that Director's Cut Edition is accessible through the PS Now service, but you will be able to get everything else. You might want to buy the uh, director's cut after you, you know, stream the the base game, and that's usually what happens to me. I like the base game, buy everything then, get enlisted and dive into the real World War Two. So I talked about this game yesterday. I'm very excited about it. It's, it's like a, a perfectly new archaeological discovery that I just picked up yesterday as I was reading news, and it is a game dedicated to some biggest battles of Second World War. It's free of charge, probably with lots of cosmetics, and uh, we can presently play. I think. The Battle of Moscow and d -Day landings in Normandy. So really nice sort of game. I'm wondering whether it is just like an FPS or whether we are playing the strategy. I guess I'll find that as I, as I, as I download it. Um, we've heard about um, Season 3 races in the Rocket League and then we've heard that we can be also becoming a bounty hunter in a hip-hop infused Wild West with Lung Slinger. And then we've had also um, the Overwatch Archives event that is presently returning with new rewards and challenges, and you know, we're very, very excited about the um, um, the event because we've seen that there's been some rumor floating about about the sequel being made, and Overwatch one of the very best battle royale games with lots of exciting fighting sequences and many multiplayer maps. And what I particularly like about it is you're getting these short clips and likes, which you can be importing and creating very easy to make screenshots and also share them straight away with your community so really a proper uh, community based game where your community can be rapidly growing you do overwatch you you can do cosplay for instance we had quite a few streamers playing the game you know dressed in full costumes of some of the participants and uh, most highly recommended i really look forward to april 6th to 27th um, developments uh, this is a limited uh, time event <coughs> already kicked off, it's been around for about 3 or 4 days and will end on the 27th so that makes it, what is it, uh, yeah, ru roughly 2 weeks um, and also you can access it through Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S so these are the news really let me see whether we've had anything else on um, Twitter quite curious, let me see talked yesterday about um, Mass Effect Legendary collection and
Days Gone 2 pitch rejected by Sony. Yeah, that was big news yesterday. And, um, well, everybody wanted to do Days Gone, but unfortunately it's been rejected. So therefore it doesn't look like there will be a sequel all that soon, maybe at a later stage. that Xbox is <coughs> asking us to be playing what they call the fifth element games and that would be Earth as far as Earth is concerned will be grounded um, if you were looking at wind it should be ever wild uh, if you're looking at fire then it will be doom eternal and if you're looking at ice that will be gears 5 well that's definitely very much of interest and uh, certainly supporting the effort they're coming up with lots of lots of different concepts in order to draw people in you know from the regular daily weekly and monthly quests when you're collecting Microsoft points um, in order to claim different rewards through you know these types of ideas like um, the fifth element are there so definitely definitely very much of interest beautifully designed and uh, you know you always want to find a reason as to why to get in and um, to play a certain game considering the abundance of titles there will come up with new systems and the most important thing for everyone is to be downloading these games as soon as they come in because this is the way to which you are going to be supporting both the developers and the publishers and make sure you do that you know any time you get new inclusions download every one of them play them bit don't, don't, you don't have to spend all of your time on every one of the games but make sure you display that you're supporting the effort because if you do not support the effort then the services will be withdrawn and I think certainly that the game streaming services that we are having at the moment on PlayStation and certainly on Xbox are the best ever, the best possible. Well, we have on Pushbox a discussion that in fact we held here on uh, my podcast. And the question here is, is PlayStation losing ground to Xbox? And I think I confirmed personally that I believe so, yes. Due to the fact that they're not working on um, the same sort of model instant access through any you know on any platform wherever you are that's the first thing secondly no backward compatibility thirdly no exclusive included on the streaming services and these are the three of the most popular things that Xbox do have therefore I certainly believe that Sony will be losing out in a big way in no time and uh, I think that's probably all the news we have oh yeah we have still here that today is the final day of the 2021 Xbox Community Summit and um, I think everybody wants to be thanking us, the Xbox Ambassadors and Community Champions and teams across Xbox for participating in conversations that will shape our future of gaming. There's another very big um, Xbox event that I will be also attending but I'll tell you all about that on another day. It's not happening imminently so we'll have plenty of time to uh, analyze and decide Alright, so I think that's about it really, as far as the news are concerned. We'll now progress to our community-based content and all that we've had coming from our viewers. Well, you've seen that this week there had been, I think, one or two days with hashtag that was trending uh, attached to sort of online trolling, online abuse. So I had quite a few questions coming in uh, which were in response to basically how to tackle online trolling and abuse and we spent the whole podcast yesterday looking at different means techniques and methods as well as procedures which every streamer or gamer can apply to their own community and it was quite in-depth and I was very glad to um, have received uh, some messages in response to that and uh, some people had found my comments and views very very helpful and I did receive uh, two messages from um, Gemma and from Josephine um, two of our friends streamers who were indeed connecting with us yesterday with the questions and they said thank you so much for providing us with a multitude of options and different types of strategies to which we are going to be able to combat these dreadful individuals who are upsetting our communities and uh, they said we were particularly glad to hear that Twitch as a corporation had introduced now new systems since January that will be also tackling any other 
offline or non-Twitch based abuse in instances where a participant causing trouble got introduced to our community through Twitch. Well, thank you for your message and thank you for your praise. I'm very glad to hear that you were able to, uh, you know, get properly armoured up with some ideas and thoughts and policies, procedures and I guess uh, um, ideas which can be applied more or less immediately and hopefully you find them also useful on the practical level, you know, how to really organize your channel, where to display your terms and conditions and channel rules as well as how to use your moderators and adhere to the boundaries that every streamer needs to have. Boundaries are frequently looked, you know, and I think they're equally important because if somebody is coming across as a streamer as a uh, person who is accepting everyone and is very chatty and uh, extending his streams on requests of you know various participants and then doing them instead of three for maybe six hours and feeling that they're always uh, supporting you know some of the requests which are actually coming in outside of the parameters of that stream then people find themselves feeling overwrought, too tired um, perhaps feeling that there's uh, um, a great demand coming from various participants perhaps some of the regulars a desire and drive to always be there for certain people to come in irrespective of the time zones etc etc so being in the zone being rested being um, clear-headed being properly nourished you know is is essential if you are doing your regular broadcasts uh, I've gone through it all and I have a lot of experience um, with every step of the way because I built a channel from scratch and everything I tell you is uh, purely based on my own personal experience and all I've gone through. Indeed I also read other people's articles and you know um, connect with thoughts of other streamers but if I'm to be providing you a tip or an advice on how to tackle a particular issue it will be exclusively based on my own personal experience because otherwise uh, it'd be of no use either to me or to anyone else. Why should I be preaching on somebody you know, uh, why, why should I be preaching somebody on what to do if, for instance, I haven't gone to that situation myself? And um, coming back to the discussion from yesterday, we we've had, um, um, you know, the, the emphasis was on two separate entities. One was where a streamer was um, receiving some comments which were considered to be abusive and off-putting from the other in-game participants. And those in-game participants could be members of your regular squad, or most importantly, or most frequently, the members of the randomly selected gamers from you know the global community. And that compared to uh, the viewers, right? So it's two different groups. Viewers are people who are watching and are providing comments and views on the overall activity on the channel, frequently directed at the broadcaster, sometimes directed at other participants if they're regulars, right? And obviously the first one being exclusively connected with people who are doing a game. So randomly selected gamers are mixed back. And uh, you know I've had quite a lot of experience uh, of that with um, well, several games, Apex probably most notably, and played with several thousand randomly selected players, generally without any major difficulties. The vast majority were not using mic. And uh, I did have uh, quite a few situations where I told them straight away that we are live on Twitch, we are streaming, we need to abide by the channel rules and they will just simply depart immediately. They didn't want to be in that sort of forum, which in fact is by far the very, very best type of uh, behavior that you can have. You can see that Deployman's watching us. So hello Deployman, how are you doing? Good to see you and thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting our podcast. And uh, I much appreciate people just departing from, um, you know, the activity if they realize that we are being live on Twitch, if they don't want to participate, if they don't want to be talking uh, uh, live on air and they don't want to be recorded or they know that their behavior is in breach of the Twitch rules and therefore they don't want to be present. So I really appreciate that much, you know, it saves a lot of time, trouble and hassle if people just simply depart. Even more frequently I've seen that in Warzone. And the reason for that is simple, you get sometimes duos who um, generally play together and they'll come into a randomly selected quad and in a quad they will see that the other guys perhaps from a different country are also streaming and uh, adhering to Twitch rules so they will not want to be playing it 
uh, in a forum. So which first of all they're recorded. Secondly, uh, they hear that they can't be any swearing or any, anything abrasive said. And for them, the greatest fun, um, as they do the game, is by being so-called macho manly. And I don't want any of that on my channel ever. But uh, I did have a number of situations where they would immediately discontinue. You know, they've heard that we are live on Twitch because I forgot to mention this. In fact, um, I forgot to mention it yesterday in response to our friends. I've, I've talked all about the procedures and what needed to be placed on the chat and then on various other sections of the overall entity that somebody has on Twi on um, on the internet. That includes Twitch, Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. You know, all of that being part and parcel of the same channel what is being offered but I uh, um, forgot to say that if you are doing multiplayer games with randomly selected gamers you have got to make sure that every single time you enter a new match before as people join you and that applies to all of the multiplayers right as people join you whether you can hear them or not you need to tell them that they're being basically they're entering a live online forum this will become even more important as you know the issues around safety and live streaming become even more heightened and um, and they will be probably more heightened due to the privacy laws you will know that sometimes on consoles certain games cannot be broadcasting other participants voices due to the privacy settings and we have that on Xbox um, it is very difficult to be um, streaming certain games on Twitch through Xbox uh, because you know the other people watching will not be able to hear the participants, but that itself defies the purpose of a live stream. Y y live stream is all about connection and interaction. You want everybody to be there to connect and to talk. So uh, uh, I principally use um, 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 PlayStation for some of these multiplayers because we have the the settings that automatically enable uh, everything to be fully recorded. And um, I mean, it's game dependent. Some games are easier to stream than others, as far as the audio recordings are concerned. But irrespective of everything, you need to have the system which is exactly the same for every single broadcast. So, for instance, you're doing PUBG, you'll play, let's say, six or eight different matches, one after one. Every single time in the lobby, when you are being selected with others, you need to tell them the following Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. You are all live on Twitch. Please remember that Twitch is being delivered on strict terms and conditions, so please do abide by the Twitch rules. Don't swear, don't do, the, don't do anything which is abrasive, aggressive or offensive, and make sure you're polite, friendly and attentive to everyone else. Or you can agree with that saying, we're live on Twitch, please make sure you are um, adhering to the Twitch live streaming rules. That's good enough, because they will know, you know, Twitch is strict and they will be then adjusting so you go to that every single time um, there have been moments um, where I forgot to say that before match if I you know, got carried away with some discussions or something and then I would have had situations where somebody said uh, certain things which were not appreciated or they would get very angry realizing that we are indeed streaming and recording that activity and they didn't want to be there that is particularly the case, um, I think, for some people who are wanting to conceal their identity or they don't want their IDs to be fully displayed in a you know, public forum. On the other hand, it's a bit, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's down to the player preference without anything else. So that's very important. I forgot to mention this yesterday and I thought I should highlight it um, as we speak today because, in addition to the boundaries that uh, a streamer needs to uphold, um, in addition to the rules which need to be displayed everywhere, and then, of course, um, uh, the um, the works of the moderators. We need to be able to tell people who are randomly selected immediately that these are the rules, because otherwise, you know, they pop in and they think they're just in a private forum, which is obviously what Twitch channels, if stream live, are not. And uh, you'd be surprised how many people get put up on that. I mean, I've, I've played with uh, God knows so many dozens of thousands of gamers over the last few years. And I, I, I find it surprising that you will get people who immediately tell you, I don't want to be on Twitch, and they'll just depart. Sometimes people who come from other countries who perhaps do not speak English um, you know, uh, too well, they will be shy of being heard through a live channel. And specifically, they will know if you're recording it, then they have no control, right? Because my channel is 
fully recorded and fully archived, meaning every one of the uh, streams is then later placed on YouTube and anyone at any time can watch it. They'll have no control you know, uh, over the content or how long the um, videos are to be remaining on the YouTube channel. And you know, sometimes people don't appreciate it. So what I'm trying to say is it's very important in all of that to be as clear as possible right from the start and for everyone to know what the actual playing field is for everyone and you're not to be uh, changing goalposts or changing the rules as you go along because the participants, people who come in to play the game together with you every day will be familiar with the procedures and all that is attached to a particular game or the channel and they'll want to be doing it exactly like that. When the changes do occur like for instance what I said yesterday I got a message from Twitch saying from January we are actually tackling not just what happens to Twitch but also what happens or you know what interactions take place through other forums if they were originally connected to Twitch and they brought in a major um, corporate fir a law firm that is then tackling the, the um, incidents which will go to court or they will go to prosecution and I think in America they experience quite a lot of these cases and therefore this has been really tightened up and highly professionalized so we are going to do exactly the same in here on um, other uh, non-US based Twitch channels we are going to be using the services in order to make sure that people behave accordingly so I've got two or three, two or three tier levels um, uh, two or three tier reports that will go in uh, one will be initially just reporting on some of this causing news. The second one will be a request for that person's lifelong ban and for them to be further investigated. And the third one, if they keep using aliases or coming on different platforms and still cause problems, and most importantly, if they're kind of uh, uh, um, coming to you through other hubs, so they they were causing you trouble on Twitch and they migrated to Discord and are ca you know causing trouble on Discord, and then from Discord they moved to, to, to Twitter or PlayStation then you will report them to that special department that deals with offline abuse or trolling and then they will take action. This is a brand new thing so I'm not sure exactly how effective it will be but um, having a corporate legal firm attached to Twitch is definitely a huge advance, um, advancement I should say and um, I really uh, applaud the company for doing so because I, I personally wrote messages uh, to their um, to their leaders indicating that I'm personally not happy with um, the way, for instance, PC players can bypass certain security measures and moderators and cause mayhem if they want to. Um, for instance, if they were to be um, sending messages to uh, Twitch, which is watched on tablets and Android phones, etc., etc., so many technical and practical concerns which are voiced, and I still I, I think that uh, the company is indeed listening to our concerns and they're taking necessary steps in order to make our communities um you know um, safer or as safe as possible deployment says uh, wish bungee had that for dealing with cheaters well um thank you deployment for your question and i think i had the same question directed at activision because if you're familiar with um, warzone setup what you do is they have a section for which you can be reporting certain people directly to the publisher and what's interesting is you have five different sections, five different categories. All of them are based on the technical side of things. Cheaters, exploiters, boosters, right? That sort of thing. What about people who are bigotry, who are racist, people who are offensive, who make sexist comments? They can't be reported directly through Activision. Um, completely unacceptable, you know? And if you're writing messages to the customer services, it's just, you know, it's drop in the ocean. It's 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 a very big thing, and um, I think uh, Activision will have to be doing something uh, a bit more um, community-based, a bit more user-friendly. Because I personally have come across not through my live broadcasts, but you know, in other forums, um, I came across people who were saying some really absolutely depro deplorable things. So having no means to which you can report them, if you are, for instance, not streaming, because if, if I'm streaming, I can report them to Twitch, and this will be you know, forwarded to the publisher. Don't forget the publisher is holding a channel, which is like a category on Twitch, and they will have access to the information, uh, which will be useful. But I think primarily for people who are playing um, outside of uh, Twitch forums, they, they, it's, it's almost impossible. And coming back to what you said about Bungie, Bungie, uh, together with other uh, big companies, like for instance, uh, um, 
what's it called? Is it Tencent? You know, the, the publishers of um, PUBG. They're unwilling to tackle the issues of cheating, saying the same thing applies to Activision. They're unwilling to be tackling uh, the issues of serious cheaters and people who use aimbots and you know everything else, because if they, for instance, applied a diagnostic tool that would automatically eradicate all of them, they would lose dozens of millions of people worldwide immediately. Which means they would have a drop on subscribers. They would have a drop on traffic. They would have a drop on. Uh, the number of participants every single day because the way it works today is they're looking at how many concurrent active players do you have any you know, on any moment of a day and we've seen that with our traders they've reached 150,000 during the first couple of days so it's a fantastic success for the new game but if they had a diagnostic tool for Destiny that would be immediately preventing people who are cheating through their PC and malware then you know they will not be getting the same numbers and that is a ser of, of, a, of a serious concern. That's the only reason as to why they didn't do it, because it would affect the the grip investment. It, it would affect uh, the stats. You know how many people are coming at an, any moment in time, and you will know from um, you know the press that all these companies are hugely dependent on inward investment, because you know the making of a game will take three, two, four, five years, and they need a lot of capital that needs to be given to them in order to complete the process. So having a very, very thorough, very um, draconian, uh, I guess, uh, technological approach with certain um, diagnostic tools and um, high quality tech that immediately detecting that someone's cheating would immediately, first of all, resolve that problem for the community, but secondly, would create a major problem for them. And in my personal view, don't quote me on this, this is my personal view, that is the reason as to why they're not doing it. And it's been a drop in the ocean for more than 10 years, more maybe, you know, because people have been doing that all along. We have seen, for instance, recently that um, uh, Twitch competitions uh, um <coughs> on, um <coughs> excuse me, we have seen recently that some, some Twitch competitions had to be discontinued because the top um, esports players doing Warzone spotted as they were going down to the last four or five teams, a number of cheaters and the teams who were, you know, blatantly cheating. And um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe something indeed will be done in due course. But as it stands today, um, the companies like Bunch and Activision are unwilling to tackle the issue because it's all about the numbers. You know, it's all about the numbers. Don't forget, as they said, we banned 40,000 players, right? What this means is 40,000 players with that user ID who are registered, let's say, with Activision through the app and you know, the, the, the server, lose access to anything that Activision would have given them over the last five to 10 years. So it's not just the lose access from, you know, um, lose access to uh, um, a war zone. They lose access to any other games. So think about it. These guys invested all the money and they can no longer play any of the games. It causes a legal issue in addition to everything else. Do you see what I mean? It's 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 a it's a it's a, it's a very complex uh, um, uh, situation that I, I feel requires uh, much uh, greater input from the publishers and the developers. They, you know, for us that do multiplayer, uh, these guys, the cheaters, are just ruining experience for us. And you've seen, for instance, the Crucible is full of cheaters. They have aimbots, they have hack all sorts of hacks, and you know, it just the way it is. And in fact, uh, the only incident that I did have um, on the channel, which was basically causing me some trolls to come in, was related to the Crucible in Destiny 1. Um, there were uh, guys who were using um, aimbots and, um, you know, uh, kind of a cheats, and uh, I basically followed the procedure through which they were eliminated, and then, you know, they kept coming under different user IDs, and so we took appropriate action. They're more resolved, and uh, <coughs> no longer part of the, com you know, they, they're no they can no longer access either Bungie servers or Twitch. But um, you know, it was it was um, interesting to see that uh, somebody who's obviously a criminal and who's cheating uh, was very displeased about the overall community and what we said, because quite frankly, they could hear you know us talking, and uh, then they were wanting to be rebelling. You know, they were attacking our very family-friendly, our um, kind of a uh, law-abiding forum uh, through many um, 
messages which were you know highly conspicuous well which said many a number of messages but they were resolved within one day basically because I use external moderators and you know uh, have really quite good links uh, with some of the major publishers and uh, I pursued it through the channels which did cause them uh, uh, you know certainly uh, some serious issues some serious difficulties and uh, <coughs> Diploma says they need to hardware and IP ban cheaters no mercy well this is what um, Twitch said that they're working on they said they're working on a lifelong IP ban and um, I think once this is established by one of the major corporations we'll have it probably uh, set up as a standard for the rest of the industry and I can't tell you how soon this is going to be but I, I know for certain because I've been to um, Twitch offices in London the European headquarters and we talked about this and they said that they you know they didn't have the tech which was good enough as yet but it will be coming and um, I think it's likely that we'll have other um, you know tech applied that will be also dealing with some other issues online for instance the use of certain words and uh, more appropriate more energetic more decisive type, type of action to be done but uh, really if you want my opinion in addition to what I said already the biggest problems for the companies like Facebook or Twitch or you know one of the major online corporates is the human resources uh, they rely on a lot of um, uh, kind of remote access and algorithms checking out certain things so for instance what what I suggested in my um, broadcast yesterday which was almost exclusively dedicated to you know how to tackle online trolls and, and abuse was well you know just like one subgroup was uh, basically based on what we do as we are streaming live so for instance we can spot somebody who is causing us problems right and then what we do is we well I use moderators for that so that they will be taking action against this person but I also ask my community members who are watching as well as the participants you might have even seen that in some of the uh, destiny streams when we spotted a cheater somebody unpleasant and somebody being offensive I asked the entire community everybody who's watching at moment in time to be forwarding uh, a report they're basically reporting this person for the breach of terms and conditions are stated by Twitch so for instance when they receive let's say 10 to 15 complaints within 20 seconds all of them targeting or I should say being attached to one person who is causing all the problems then the um, the algorithm will flag that individual and you will have somebody looking at it right so to be a human being double checking the entries that is the best the fastest and the most effective way of doing it because as he checks out all the reports he already automatically has access to um, all the entries and therefore he can impose a ban and the ban could be lifelong immediately you know uh, the, the trolls and these kinds of uh, unpleasant individuals don't realize that these companies are recording the interactions the interactions can be seen and reviewed if necessary and therefore it's a good way of tackling it and uh, um, Diploma says uh, uh, but IP can be easily worked around if you hardware ban them like tag their motherboard they will need to buy a new one and they will not be cheap that will make Destiny a paid game but I kinda like the hardware ban option more as you will make them pay a lot more than the game cost previously well I tell you what uh, Microsoft used to do I'm not sure what it is still today I'm quite certain the same measure is applied uh, they have really very very sophisticated diagnostic tools which are literally sitting in your console right because if you look at the systems files they always have one section which is monitoring all that you're doing in there they're very concerned in the past that people using um, pirated software you know the games which were pirated so for instance if the algorithm detected that the game played on the console was pirated or if they detected they were chipping Xbox they would send some information like an update to that console which basically made it dead for life that console was no longer um, you know useful for any online services in addition to that that particular game attack received a lifelong ban so it was very draconian very efficient and that's one of the reasons why they were not allowing people to be changing their emails 
you know still today if you have to change your email on Xbox that you can't do that you just got one email which is there for life and that's part of the reason for it so they have very very drastic measures and therefore Microsoft forums you probably would have seen are a lot more ethical do not have any major interferences compared to you know what you get on Twitter and Twitch um, because there is a, a, a draconian measure applied uh, towards anyone who is uh, you know in breach of these rules and I think it's, 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 it's a very very good very appropriate way of tackling um, individuals who are basically you know also criminals and um, you know lots of people wouldn't do um, certain things in real life uh, not just to, to swear but to say very offensive things which are bigotry and sexist and racist and everything and they feel compelled to do that because they feel well they have some degree of anonymity coming back to your point uh, what we have in Britain is uh, a method which did take a long, long while to, to get established. Um, it's a method that prevented people from um, using the sites that are doing pirating, you know, anything which is to do with piracy. I'm sure that the hackers have got some ways to which they can crack this, but for instance, if you're access accessing a site which indeed was given a court order from High Court uh, indicating that they're providing um, unsolicited, you know, non -copyri um, uh, copyrighted material, and therefore they're considered to be, you know, doing pirating. Basically, uh, you cannot be accessing this site because the block has been established through the um, ISP, and all ISPs will have that filter which is preventing everyone from accessing those sites. And what you get is you click on a site, you get a message on a screen saying. Um, in view of the high court order, you've got the number, the case, the date and everything else, this this particular site has been prohibited from any form of access in the United Kingdom and therefore you can't access it. So that is the future, that is the way it is going to be and I think what you said, uh, the access through one's own local ISP may well be connected um, or some somewhat detected and uh, I'm not sure really how this works on the tech side of things but I'm certain that as we carry on and as the tech becomes more and more embedded in our everyday use uh, usage uh, inclusive of you know people now working from home due to the pandemic we also have measures that will enforce uh, safety and security you will recall we had the same problem with financial transactions 20 years ago it was very risky and um, today you know the uh, servers like Google and uh, PayPal and you know the international money transactions which banks conduct are absolutely almost 100% safe and it did take a while for that to be established gaming industry is not that keen on doing it you know because they feel that if you impose huge restrictions you will be losing very very many uh, potential clients and subscribers I think it's a myth it's based on fear because if for instance they know they cannot be doing it they will simply refrain from doing it which actually brings you back to some you know totalitarian to tyrannical types of regimes where people know if they look left uh, they're going to be executed you know it's absolutely crazy but uh, um, I'm not sure whether you can follow my stream of thought uh, what I'm trying to say is they're unwilling to be imposing the ban because they're worried about the monetary implications but sooner or later due to the sheer volume of the participants they will have to do it And uh, Diploma says that method you just mentioned sounds good on paper, but it most likely will be misused and exploited by the government. Well, I'm not sure. I think uh, of what I've seen uh, recently, I got this message from Twitch the other day where they said from January of 2021, anyone who would have been contacting uh, an individual who's a Twitch subscriber, we will tackle if they are causing you know, trouble or harassing through other platforms as well because we you know consider that this person had the initial contact with Twitch and they brought in a major corporate firm that is dealing with this in cases of serious incidents so it's a good way forward and I think the safety and security systems will be you know developing as we go along I just feel that so far there have been um, few investments and not enough attention given to it because you know th th this is um the vast majority of these developing companies they're based on inward investment and they have shareholders and they're looking at continuous aggressive progression forward you've seen the games have become bigger greater in volume in length uh, they require a lot more money they take a lot more 
uh, time in order to get produced and it's all kind of you know partly connected if you know that for instance uh, um, a great number of people well put it put in in perspective I discussed this with my European uh, streamer colleagues why is it that PlayStation Europe is huge and Xbox is like really almost non-existent the reason for that is that some of the Microsoft services are not instantly accessible in many European countries so what's the point of getting the ultimate subscription or buying an Xbox if you can't really access everything that Microsoft offers you know that's obviously the downside and uh, Microsoft will resolve this in due course they have new leadership and they're doing extremely well at the moment but the non-accessibility um, uh, of the services is based on you know size uh, how many likely subscribers are you to be getting in an area where these live services need to be running the live service is extremely expensive to maintain and they'll be looking just at the bigger countries like Germany France and Britain to have full access um, so the, the same numbers principle applies to uh, the FPS games which you know are most popular at the moment Battle Royale and PvP so they all want to be attracting as many people as possible and um, and it's the excitement it's the um, you know it's in a human nature you know that the other guy is playing that character you're eliminating him and therefore you are more powerful it's a bit like doing boxing or wrestling providing a knockout you know that sort of thing so that is of their concern and it's all exclusively connected with cross-platform access and uh, with PvP games you know you can't be cheating on PlayStation or Xbox there's no way you can cheat if you're on PC you can cheat as much as you want and that itself I believe will come to an end sooner or later I don't know you know under what auspices and how they will be able to do that but I can assure you it will come to an end and uh, a diplomat says the thing I'm getting at is uh, if your ISP will block banned websites that can lead to illegal activity what would stop them from hiding stuff um, the government close and doesn't want you to see and can be left to cause more trouble without anyone knowing well <laughs> it's two different issues one is how you really do that on the technical front how you are going to be able to be blocking you know through application of filters and diagnostic tools and everything else the other is purely a legal issue right and that's to do with uh, the way the laws are to be applied to blocking prevention detention prosecution and everything else this is they're very separate very very different but also I guess mutually bound and fairly connected and um, what you said there's always a danger that if you start applying continuously um, restrictive orders and um, you know bans and uh, blocks and uh, um, purges then that can escalate and could sort of spread into the other areas of day-to-day -day life but I think uh, there is a difference between needing to apply the measures that will protect our online communities and the measures which will be seen as enhancing safety and then those which are you know connected to eavesdropping and spying and that sort of thing and don't forget the uh, uh, government agencies will always have both the tech and the ability to do whatever they want to do um, provided that obviously the tech is as advanced but whether they'll have the legal backing for that whether this could be used in courts is a separate issue so you know it's 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 got a complex area really and the way I see it is I said this in my um, other podcast the way I see it is um, the problems really occurred as we invented and you know, began to distribute smartphones. The problems with this sort of online trolling and generally incidents taking place which were outside of online forums were you know, far and few in between before the development and the application of smartphones. Smartphone gave access um, to almost everyone, right? And uh, uh, everyone can be then getting into various sites and services online with ease just pull out you know you pull out your phone and you type and uh, for instance Twitch or YouTube you pull out your phone and you can be watching and typing communicating this was not possible before you know before people had to buy computers computers were very expensive therefore the number of participants was you know greatly restricted don't forget the other factor was whether people had internet or not because for a good 15 20 years not many people had internet and uh, so this was restricting the number of participants and obviously people who were um, 
you know, well-off, people who had disposable income, people who bought computers, had internet. So it was a smaller number. I think like anything else, once you leave it to the general public, it's like you walk the streets. You never know what kind of individual you'll find out there. And um, this is what Twitch and YouTube are like today. Um, it's a bit like roaming the streets, but you don't have any police in there. You know? And it's just wrong. I wouldn't say no police, but just very few. Because obviously we have some safety measures in there which, which are useful, but it's not as good or as big as it should be. And uh, deployment says, yeah, it is very complex. Yeah, and I think people need to understand this. Uh, if you have an incident or uh, a serious, um, you know, group of, uh, um, how to put it, if you have uh, a problem with somebody who is in your community online and it's it's obvious to everyone that this person is you know causing issues upsetting other community members etc the way to tackle this is just simply by going through the you know uh, doing it by the book you just go through procedures and make sure that it's completely impersonal that you follow the rules and that you've got tangible evidence that somebody's doing something which is in breach of what is offered through twitch on terms and conditions and then it's easy but some people not cave in, you know, they just carry on with their rants and with their abuse and then as they realize that they were prevented from accessing the services, let's say through Twitch, they just migrate to YouTube or come on Twitch or they change their, e um, you know, user IDs. And therefore I think what Twitch applied recently is very good. It will be giving an extra muscle uh, through which uh, streamers and gamers can report and people who are doing it offline or through other platforms can also be chased and brought to book so you know it's, that's a more advanced method and obviously having a, a top corporate firm legal firm um, fully on board to represent the interests of both Twitch and individual clients will be of great assistance I think in America they had become very very concerned after um, you know the elections of last year and all that happened uh, because they realized that many of those problems were caused by unsolicited, uncontrolled, unfiltered communication online and Twitch actually did change the rules. I don't know whether you've seen this. Um, there are certain topics uh, which you can debate on Twitch but only under specific guidelines. You know, the issues of employment, migration, human rights, um, um, various kind of uh, political issues. They have clear guidelines on what you can, what you cannot say, which was not present there beforehand. So, you know, it's becoming, I guess, to a degree more restrictive, but at the same time, I think there, there is a need for it, you know. I think it, everyone can access all the information through the handset, and it's accessible to literally every human on the planet. Evidently, you will get all types of people coming in, and like in any other community, you know when you go to a nightclub, there'll be bouncers in there, and they'll be checking people's IDs to see whether people are old enough to go in there to drink alcohol to, to mix with, you know, adults. They'll be looking at the dress code. They'll be looking at whether a person appears to be sober or drunk. So these are the, the measures which we have in our local community that need to be applied to our online communities. And most importantly, I think you mentioned something about not having enough money to uh, sort this out. Well, the money will be spent on human resources. You know, it's easier to invest in algorithms, but uh, it's human resources that need to be there. There's one thing that Twitch told me when I was attending that conference was we grew so exponentially that we didn't anticipate that we have hundreds of millions of people accessing our services every day. We don't have the workforce that can be doing all that policing and all that monitoring. We just you know, don't have these resources, we don't have the revenue. And that itself is a serious problem. It, it really is. And uh, unless you have people manning positions, it's a bit like you had somebody doing forged documents. Well, fair enough, uh, an algorithm can pick it up, but you will need a man you know, human being looking at it and checking it and finding out whether the document is actually authentic or forged. And that, that will be the future. Don't forget, advanced tech will provide uh, filtering and the initial information, so therefore uh, certain things could be seen early, like for instance, I mean, uh, it's, it's extraordinary really how quickly they pick up certain things uh, today, but uh, if you compare Alexa, you know, the uh, um, AI, uh, from five years ago with the one today, you will see how much more advanced it is, as well as uh, kind of uh, Google Assistant and all the other ones. And that tells you that there will be the means to which the tech will pick up certain irregularities, and then, you know, there'll be a man at the end there looking at it. But the numbers are the problem.
you know the numbers are the problem I mean if you think I tried this launch the other day between 130 and 150 thousand um, concurrent players and participants and all these people are talking communicating and you know you, you will need to have a machinery that's filtering out the content and then maybe giving you some pointers on the other hand doing it all through remote services and through the algorithms is not viable and for anyone who's been a you know a content creator stream on YouTube I can certainly t tell you that um, some of the algorithms are absolutely ridiculously draconian and they pick up sometimes uh, um, you know things which are not strictly speaking completely relevant and they can impose you know lifelong bans and um, the block channels prevent broadcasting um, and you know all sorts of issues and the only way you can resolve that if they applied it is if you go through the US federal court so you need to have uh, a legal firm in the US representing it to go that it's just you know it's extremely expensive and um, very troubling I, I, I guess I can tell you people who are really badly affected are um, photographers and video makers and you know because they have this issue around the copyright laws and sometimes the algorithm will pick up something which is not quite relevant and um, for instance a photographer who was uh, taking shots of a band playing on stage and algorithm can't detect whether he was doing that for himself or for an agency right? and an agency could have imposed a ban and the algorithm will detect that this is this is basically a photograph taken at that event at that time and they'll impose a ban and actually the photographer didn't work for an agency but he had the authority to take photographs do you follow me? and uh, the image uploaded is a digital image that's exactly the time, the date and everything else and this would be good enough for that entity to prevent that photographer from being able to use the services impose a lifelong ban, copyright breaches, whatever and it's a serious issue it will be resolved eventually you know, we, we are, I mean in my lifetime I've seen such advancement of technology as uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in no doubt that uh, things will work out but they take time you know, they take time and uh, some developments like um, the advancement of graphics and audiovisuals in gaming have been so rapid but the um, establishment of safety measures and uh, everything that's necessary for us to feel um, you know uh, healthy and safe online uh, have been lagging behind because you know, it's about investment y you launch Warzone or Call of Duty installment you want millions of people to come in straight away right and uh, um, if you have you know all the obstacles I, uh, you're probably familiar you know all the discussions in the US politics all about the regulation the private industry hates regulation in the US they they really hate every bit of it and so anytime you hear anything which has got that not even the full word regulation like REG popping up that's good enough for investors to start pulling up money <laughs> and you know what I'm trying to say is that uh, many companies there will be very um, concerned if uh, too much regulation was being applied because they will see that as a serious obstacle to a free flow of investment and therefore advancement of particular sections of the industry. It's just the way the system works, you know. In Britain it's a different story altogether. I mean, we have a lot of regulation and um, uh, the vast majority of it is absolutely necessary and, uh, you know, we operate differently. We can't imagine certain sections of the industry without certain regulation. It's just impossible. But as I said, it will come. And uh, um, Deployment says, uh, uh, yeah, they banned Trump, uh, um, Twitch account uh, should have been done sooner and maybe there would be... Well, I mean, uh <coughs> to be honest with you, I wouldn't really go into the ins and outs of uh, American politics or you know anything that's been happening out there. I can certainly tell you that uh, um, they will be advancing the methods and the um, you know apps and procedures that that will provide greater sense of safety. I think it's 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 seen as absolutely necessary in the same way as you know seen it's necessary to ensure that if you are transferring money and you use your mobile phone, people can't can't hack into it and then snatch the money from your accounts. And initially this was possible with smartphones, but you know they developed uh, safety systems which are uh, protecting you know the um, information and uh, it's become a lot more secure safe and sound and I think that that is going to be happening that is what we are going to have 
while Diplomancer is uh, providing us some comments on the way things are, um, I think we need to be patient. We need to keep uh, healthy, safe and well at the moment, adhere to social distancing rules, because this dreadful pandemic is not going to subside quickly. And uh, as it carries on, and as it continues to affect you know, the entire world and the economy and the human community as we know it, there will be consequences, there will be collateral and uh, I think this collateral will be based on each country's readiness to tackle certain issues. So somewhere there will be new resolutions found and unfortunately some other countries there will be a lot of trouble. This is the way things are today, you know, and um, we need to be patient and we need to brace for whatever is to follow. I mean we certainly in Britain are prepared for anything. I think everyone in our society as well as the government will be prepared for whatever might come. It's just we can't predict it, you know. The, the the entire system is under huge duress and huge pressure coming from everywhere. We have almost a non-functioning economy already for 30 months, and you know, there will be collateral, there will be issues, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we cannot then create new systems which will be working better in that sort of environment, and maybe even in the long term, it will be done to the people, you know. It's always done to the people who run it. And uh, I've, I've, I've heard some things about Activision which were really unsavory recently about the leadership and everything else and as you know that my channel uh, has a very strict curb on any form of politics being discussed on it so I don't really discuss any of it. Uh, but it, does, it did seem a bit strange that um, they were bringing in uh, some people who are kind of quite well known for you know certain types of views or approaches and um, I think generally I find it uh, unacceptable that a company of that size uh, is not having, you know, online any um, forums to which people can be reporting certain types of behaviours. By that I don't mean anything which is based on cheating or, you know, uh, boosting or exploiting, but, you know, the actual comments and views if people say terrible things. And it's well known that Call of Duty forums had a lot of activity um, and interaction which is highly questionable. So, you know, it's 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 down to the people. Like, like always, it's down to, to the people to... Uh, consider it and take action and make sure that things are alright and uh, if they don't then there is trouble that's just the way it is alright I, I think we've come to the end of our podcast for today I want to thank our friend Deployman for popping in and indeed uh, providing us with some highly valuable thoughts and views on all um, online safety related uh, very very grateful um, for input sir really uh, it's been a pleasure as always and uh, very grateful that you were able to come in today because uh, I've talked about online safety now for about two or three days uh, in a row and um, it's been an issue this week it's been highlighted by many different streamers and as you will be familiar like with hashtag on Twitter if you get like a big thing going it becomes a trend and then other people pop in and I actually received early in the week so Tuesday Wednesday half dozen messages from uh, some of my associates and uh, people who watch the channel with these questions and that was all aligned with the hashtag discussions on Twitter which were very voluminous on these days and incidentally I've also read I mean probably all connected to it I, I, I read um, messages coming from two or three of my uh, associates who I knew, you know, I know quite well who were also experiencing the same thing and um, you know I just find it completely unacceptable and uh, I run my channel to a degree which I believe to be the safest possible but I, sti I still feel that you know streamers who are using the webcam are a bit more vulnerable uh, I've had I mean I've had very little of that sort of behavior here overall and I've been running the channel for now three years and um, you know completely problem free with exception of that uh, group of tr um, trolls who were trying to really hack into our, 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 uh, the crucible activity a couple of years ago um, you know, no problems, but uh, it's it's down to lots of different factors, and I just think I want our online community to be a bit more vocal about what they believe is absolutely necessary, and in order to you know protect that degree of safety, um, so that needs to be you know um, consistently voiced, and uh, from the other party it needs to be heard, so that we get the measures and policies and procedures which will be 
helping. I'm really encouraged by some of the things that Twitch did do. At the moment, you're probably familiar, uh, the guys who are on PCs, they can bypass Twitch security. You know, if you are, for instance, getting into a forum like mine, when I'm streaming through console and I'm watching my um, chat through um, Android, then um, the system will not always pick up you know, some of the comments and I it's troubling. I've had some issues with that in the past. But, you know, things will change as we carry on. So, thank you, sir, for coming in and for communicating with us. Uh, uh, thanks to Deployman for being always a great and very valued community member. I just want to tell you that uh, in due course, uh, I will start playing No Man's Sky and I will email you about it because I will need some assistance. I've seen the latest update and uh, it's called Expeditions Update, isn't it? And then you can do certain things together with other people right from the beginning. And I think that's really good. It's, it's, I guess, similar to what I had in the Outer Worlds. I've played the Outer Worlds now for more than a week, and the game felt very similar to No Man's Sky initially. But it's now, you know, there with a in-game tutor and the reworked prologue, and it's just a bit more consistent in terms of its story and the narrative. So, uh, um, yeah. I look forward to that and all of other wonderful online gaming experiences which are to follow. There's so many games to choose from and it's never been a better time. Today when I when I looked at um, you know when I looked at um, GTA 5 it's a new next gen version on Game Pass. You just click download and you know you play straight away. I, it's just the best possible. It's th it's been the best way through which we can really during the dreadful time of the pandemic connect with other people in the world and I certainly had um, a wonderful wonderful um, selection of experiences during the last 13 months and never felt alone for a split second and uh, um, all of my community members felt really well connected and um, even s so much that the other day they were voting a couple of guys that I should be winning the COVID warrior reward they said we, we managed our lockdown so well because we were coming in there every day we played Warzone and Apex and Destiny and other games and it's been such a good experience it made our life really worthwhile and and um, wasn't been absent now for a couple of weeks but uh, you know from next week we'll crack on as usual get our community um, back uh, make it up and running and everything's gonna be as good as always and uh, our friend deployment says send me a whisper on twitch then you're ready to play and I'll join you on your adventures absolutely yeah as I said it will not be immediate because I have several um, games there in my backlog and uh, at the moment have several that I want to be playing and I think No Man's Sky is similar to Destiny or The Outer World. It's a massive big open world game with massive galaxy, the planets, the explorations and everything else and uh, I will have to allocate time but uh, certainly it'd be great to um, uh, play the game together with you. I believe you'll be playing it on PC, is that right? Or on a PlayStation, I think it's on a PC, right? And then the game's cross-platform, so we should be able to hook up without any difficulty. Are you on a PC or PlayStation? Because I can download it. Oh, it's cross-play, yeah, yeah, I thought so. No, it's fine, it's fine. I can play it on, on either PlayStation or Xbox. It's no big deal. I think probably um, performing a, 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 a tiny little bit better on, on Xbox from what I got, because I'm, I'm, I tried it on both platforms and I thought it was a bit laggy, a bit choppy on PlayStation. That's because I was doing it through its uh, streaming services rather than its download. So Xbox performs somewhat better. But um, anyway, thank you Deployman for joining us and always greatly appreciate it. And also want to say thank you to all of our viewers and listeners. We had a wonderful podcast yet again today dedicated to the news and also to the online safety. So, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you for supporting our community live on Twitch. We'll carry on as usual tomorrow. And I would like to thank everybody who participated, not just today, but literally since I began running my podcast a few weeks ago. It's been a very, very humbling, very um, exciting experience with many messages received offline, really. People email me most of the times. And we are getting really into a proper online forum that tackles all sorts of issues which are um, online gaming related. So that's really truly wonderful. I want to have a separate forum from our usual kind of in-game broadcasts and I think it's been already fully developed. So thank you for watching and I shall see you all tomorrow.